family and welcome. We are so excited to bring you the life of Blessed Elizabeth Canori Mora. She could easily be called the saint of married couples. She was a friend and spiritual sister of Blessed Anna Maria Taiji and a member of the Third Order of the Trinitarians. She was a true Romano, born and raised in the Eternal City on the Via Tor dei Conti, very close to the Colosseum. She was born in 1774 of a very spiritual family, also of the nobility. She was raised in the finest schools. As a child, her parents would promenade through the streets of Rome with her and her sister Benedetta. The children were thrilled at the sights of the city. The family experienced hard times due to crop failures, poor livestock, and the like. Their situation went from wealthy to poor in a very short time. As a young girl, she and her sister Benedetta were sent to Kasha to attend school with the nuns of the Order of St. Rita of Kasha. Young Augustinian nuns there said she showed a great deal of intelligence and spirituality. While studying with the nuns at Kasha, her sister Benedetta made the acquaintance of a nun from the Augustinian monastery of St. Clair of Montefalco and developed a relationship with her which continued after the girls returned to Rome. She grew into a very beautiful young woman. On her return to Rome, she found herself involved with the social life of the city. While she never compromised her morals or religious values, she did enjoy that part of her life. While the family had lost their financial position, they never lost their social standing in the community. It was in this atmosphere that she met Christopher Moore, son of a well-known doctor. Christopher was a lawyer. He was handsome and gallant. He swept her off her feet, and they were married when she was 22 years old in 1796. The honeymoon did not last long. Christopher never stopped being what he had been before he met Elizabeth, a playboy. He continued to flirt with young women. He met and began an adulterous affair with another woman. He ne neglected his family and his business he wound up putting his whole family into debt and close to poverty. Christopher treated Elizabeth and the children horribly. He abused them and brought the financial situation to the point of bankruptcy. All her friends advised her to leave him and begin a new life. It was at this point, the low point in her life, where she experienced such suffering that the Lord put the Trinitarians, an order dedicated to the Holy Trinity, in her path. They aided her in her suffering. Through the entire spiritual aid they provided her, she made a commitment to be faithful to her unfaithful husband and pray for his conversion. She devoted her life to this mission. She entered the third order of the Trinitarians. It was during this time of healing that she met another third order Trinitarian, Anna Maria Taigi, who was a mystic and prophet. They developed a deep spiritual relationship as well as a lasting friendship. We're at the Church of San Carolino in Cuatro Fontan. Father 
Isidoro Murciego, he's Spanish, and he's here at the church. He's a Trinitarian priest. He's going to share with us a little bit about the life, the two lives that that took place here of uh, Blessed Anna Maria Taigi and Blessed Elisabetta Canore Mora. Father, uh, Father, will you tell us how the uh, two uh, blesseds uh, came together? After all, one was from a rich family and the other was from a poor family. The two blesseds, Anna Maria Taigi and Elizabeth Canori Mora, met and became friends here at this church of San Carlino. Their spiritual journeys brought them together here. We say that it was divine providence that brought them together here, because it was during difficult times, especially for Elizabeth Canori Mora. She was advised above all by a Jesuit priest she had at the beginning of a spiritual, as a spiritual director, who recommended her to come to this church, because there was here at this church a Jesuit priest who already had fame as a spiritual director. She came here. And she said that as soon as she came into this church, she felt so good that she never wanted to leave this church. So here she met Anna Maria Taigi on the occasion of the death of her father. And it was said that the two together went to pray at the Scala Santa. They went to pray for the salvation of Elizabeth's father's soul. On their knees, they shared this experience. And from here, we know that they became very good friends and share the same spiritual walk in this church. Blessed Elizabeth is buried here. Is that correct? Did her funeral mass take place here? Blessed Elizabeth is buried here. A funeral was held here. A tomb was here for a long time, since 1883. Blessed Elizabeth, her experience, both material and spiritual, kept bringing her closer and closer here to this church. Every time she had to move, she moved closer to this church. She last lived close by at, at a corner of the church. Then after her death, yes, her funeral was held here, not only the funeral, but she was actually laid out for two days here, close to the sacristy because there was a big feast for our founder and she was there and people came to visit her. And afterwards she was buried in the crypt of this church and since she had such a fame of sanctity, although there are others buried here who were also saintly, we brought her here to this chapel and she was there until the beatification. After the beatification she was brought to this altar and, and placed here. parochiale di uh, Beata Elisabetta. Uh, this was not a parish church, but she was a member of the Third Order of Trinitarians. Trinitario. Oh, third order. Okay. So she was a Third Order Trinitarian, as was Blessed Anna Maria Taigi, the two of them. So when she died, it made sense for her to be buried here because this is of that order. This church is of the order of the Trinitarians, and she was buried here in the church. Uh, and Father said she also came to live near here. A che quante anni hanno avuto quando hanno fatto terzi anni? Elizabeth was a little over 30 eh, years, and Maria Taigi was a little older. Here they lived, they made their walk together as third order Trinitarians. And this is within the charisma of the Trinitarians. We have been here since 1600 in this church. Many third order Trinitarians have passed through this church. 
and even other Trinitarians who became founders of institutes and who died with a f fame of holiness, now an extraordinary place for this life of holiness, one might say. Elizabeth and Anna Maria are two role models as mothers and wives. Uh, we believe that the Lord has uh, um, called us to write of these two blesseds. Um, they complement each other. They are touchable sisters in our world today. They are speaking to the hearts of so many women who are suffering and who uh, the enemy is telling to leave their husbands and uh, to find others, uh, to find another lifestyle. OK. Blessed, blessed Elizabeth. Uh, the contrast between her and Anna Maria Taiji, they both suffered with their husbands. But whereas Anna Maria Taiji's husband was faithful, a little boisterous, not very agreeable, not very pleasant to live with, uh, with Blessed Elizabeth, it was far more serious. She was lovely. She was very, come from a very wealthy family. She loved to dress. She loved to party. And uh, soon, a very handsome lawyer saw her, and they fell in love, and he married her. But within a very short time, she discovered that he had a mistress. And this broke her heart. But she remained faithful. And she took care of her children. She took care of her husband. He became a gambler. He gambled away their money. He, they, he spent her money and his money on a mistress. And soon, they were in such bad financial straits that this lovely, fair lady had to start to take in sewing. And now, that was another thing that Blessed Anna Maria Teiji did. She supplemented her husband's income by taking in sewing. But this was a faithful wife who remained faithful, and she found her consolation in this church with a friend, a friend who also believed in the sacrament of matrimony, in the sanctity of marriage and of uh, motherhood. Blessed Elizabeth said to her husband one day, I know this sounds ridiculous, and I know you will laugh at me, but one day, you will celebrate Mass for me. Well, she never lived to see it. She saluted it from afar. Just like Anna Maria Teiji never really saw the conversion of her husband, Blessed Elizabeth did not. And after she died, her husband converted. He realized he had been married to a saint. And he became a priest and died in the order of sanctity. And yes, he celebrated Mass for his wife who had been deceased. It's wonderful, isn't it? Well, how the Lord works for those who have faith in him. I think that there's a lesson, especially for our ladies who have problems with their marriages with their husbands. It is never a hopeless situation. Uh, Blessed Elizabeth never would have thought, even though she knew, the Lord told her that this would happen, from the world standard, she never thought this man would convert. It never seemed like he would ever turn around, much less become a priest or say a mass for her and die in the order of sanctity. Uh, the same happened with St. Rita of Kasha. Her husband converted after 20 years. Ladies, there is hope for us. There is hope for the women who have problems with their men. There is hope for the men who have problems with women. Our Lord is telling us here that marriage and family are important, are good, and it does work. Something happened here, and I think it might give us a clue to how these women were able to live this life with these husbands. One day after uh, Anna Maria Teiji received communion here, she went into ecstasy and the Lord spoke to her. He said, I am in you now. You have received me and I embrace you. I give you strength. I give you strength for the walk that you have to walk and you're not even aware of my presence in you. 
allow me to embrace you. Allow me to hold you in my arms. And you will not be afraid to walk wherever I lead you. Was this what gave her the strength? Is this what gave Blessed Elizabeth the strength? Do we turn to our Lord Jesus? Do we go to Mass? Do we receive him and say to him, Sweet Lord Jesus, I believe you are in me. I allow you to lead me. Show me the way. What is the spirituality of the Trinitarians that have produced these two blessed future saints in our church? Yes, a very interesting question, because these two blessed are in this spiritual walk. They are both in this walk, this path of life, and is perhaps a secret to be discovered and valued, and also for today to be valued, and to see that it is a path that is very valid for today. Very well, the Trinitarian spirituality that they perceived is an extraordinary way in what our order is, this charisma in the church is the Trinitarian life, life in the Trinity, how to live in God the Trinity, how to abandon ourselves like Christ abandoned himself in the hands of the Father, and always guided by the workings of the Spirit. It is our mission as, and has been from the beginning to discover and to live in God the Trinity, to live as temples of the Trinity, as if each of our lives is a house of God for the Trinity. So we help our brothers and sisters to live this, to live this Trinitarian life that brings you to an interior freedom, an exterior of everything. So our mission from the beginning is to liberate the Christian slaves that are in the hands of the captives. At the, at the beginning, it was the, the infidels in this encounter or battle that was going on between the Christians and the infidels. So our mission was in the name of God, the Trinity which was also a way to evangelize the infidels, to speak to them about God the Trinity, to liberate, to free our brothers and sisters who were in the jails, that were enslaved. Therefore, the significance is this, how to free ourselves from the chains. And so Christ Redeemer is the only liberator. Christ Redeemer we must proclaim. And Elizabeth Kanori Moore and Anna Maria Taiji understood this very well, that Christ is the liberator, the only one who can set us free. So in any problem of life they perceived in the problem, in the problem of chain from which one had to be liberated, and the spirit always participating in Christ gives that strength. That is how Elizabeth Kanori Moore discovered her vocation precisely in the infidelity of her husband. She, she, she clearly understood that the Lord had called her as a wife to give her life for his salvation, to liberate him from all his chains. He was a captive. So her mission was to redeem her husband in the name of the Trinity. And through her husband, all of, the, and through her husband, all of those whom she knew. She knew many poor souls and she would help them, just as Anna Maria Taiji. They even helped the church they even helped the Pope in difficulties that he might have had, political situations, bad advice. So let's say that to break the chains for them, for both of them, was a great message in the name of Christ, in the name of the Trinity. This, in short, is our message, their message. Where did your order begin? The, Trini the Trinitarian order began in Paris with an inspiration on the doors of each of our churches and houses. There's an inscription that reads, this order has been founded not by men, but only by God. Because they say that when the Pope approved the order, he made this statement. And this has been passed on. Our founder had an inspiration in Paris. He was a professor in Paris in 1198. He discovered, he saw in a vision during his first mass that appeared to him. He saw the majesty of God with two slaves who were being dragged in chains 
So he saw that his vocation was in the name of the Trinity to go and redeem these slaves. And so he started in France, then it spread, it extended to Italy, Spain, it extended to the Holy Land and North Africa. These are the most traditional places where we are present. And there are so many Trinitarians, including women, because there are many institutes of women Trinitarians and contemplatives and secular third orders and confraternities. It's a family. Today we call ourselves Trinity family, and we are in many countries of the world in spite of all the suffering throughout history. They were known to walk barefoot together from the church of San Carlino in Quattro Fontani, near the presidential palace, to St. Paul outside the walls. This is a distance of just under six kilometers or four miles. Normal walking would take about an hour and 10 minutes, but walking barefoot, who knows how long it took them. At any rate, they would process all around the perimeter of St. Paul outside the walls, praying. Cardinal Pettuccini used to go with her and several people, and they would go to the seven churches of Rome. Uh, of Rome, and they would go to mass, receive communion, and uh, they would tour the seven churches. Okay, and then they would end up at St. Paul outside the wall. And one time, uh, they ended up here. She went to mass, and she received communion. And after communion, she went into ecstasy. On this one particular day after receiving uh, her com Holy Communion, she went into ecstasy, and this was before the, uh, the crucifix that spoke to St. Bridget. And when she went into ecstasy, our Lord spoke to her and said, this basilica will burn down because of the, um, the sins that are committed, the abuses that are committed in this church. Shortly after, St. Paul outside the walls burned down. On May 11, 1990, the ecclesiastical censor entrusted by the Holy See with the examination of the manuscripts of Blessed Elizabeth Canori Mora issued his four formal judgment. He affirms, in all the writings of the servant of God, Elizabeth Canori Mora, there is nothing contrary to the faith and good customs, nor is therein encountered any altered or deviant doctrine or doctrine foreign to the common and customary sentiment of Holy Mother Church. Elizabeth Canori Mora was beatified by Pope John Paul II in 1994, the year of the family. Pope John Paul II spoke of her in these words, today we are also raising two Italian women to the honors of the altar, Gianna Barretta Mola and Elizabeth Canori Mora, women of heroic love, both exemplary wives and mothers, who gave dedicated witness to the demanding values of the gospel in daily life. For her part, Elizabeth Canori Mora, in, amidst a great many marital difficulties, showed total fidelity to the commitment she had made in the sacrament of marriage and to the responsibility stemming from it. Constant in prayer and in her heroic dedication to her family, she was able to rear her children as Christians and succeeded in converting her husband. Taking these two women as models of Christian perfection, we would like to pay homage to all brave mothers who dedicate themselves to their own family without reserve, who suffer in giving birth to their children, and who are ready to make any effort to, to face any sacrifice in order to pass on to them the best of themselves. One of, the, one of the messages that I understood Father to say was that Anna Maria Teiji and Blessed uh, Elizabeth knew that only the Lord was the liberator. He was the only exodus out of suffering. Uh, Blessed Elizabeth uh, took her vow of uh, 
uh, marriage very seriously. And, uh, and uh, Bob and I have always said that the Lord sent us to be each a guardian angel of the other. She uh, lived, suffered for the sanctification of her husband, and it came about. That was her goal in life, is the sanctification of her husband. And as the Lord has often told me, you take care of my children, I will take care of yours. She took care of the poor, the, the, both of them took care of the poor and the ill, and the Lord took care of their husbands. And another thing to think about, you know, many of you, uh, especially ladies who tell us that you and your spouse are not evenly yoked, you must continue to pray for your spouse, you must offer your spouse up to the Lord, because the most important sacrament that you've got is your sacrament of matrimony. That is the greatest sacrament that you can enjoy. And you can even see on the writings that uh, are here at the tomb of Blessed Elizabeth, uh, Paul to the Ephesians talking about the sacrament of matrimony, to Corinthians, all of these sayings about matrimony, the, the wife to the husband, the husband to the wife, this is your great sacrament, the sacrament of marriage. Thank you. Thank you. Ringraziamo. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. It has been such a grand experience, una grande esperienza spirituale, e noi ringraziamo Dio, primo, e il, il Padre, il Figlio e Spirito Santo. Santo, and this is the church, the order of the, the Trinity, the most beloved Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise you, Jesus. God bless you, everyone. Thank you, family, for watching. This is just one of over 200 books and videos available here at Journeys of Faith. Now, these are perfect tools for evangelization and give them as gifts for birthdays, confirmations, First Holy Communion. Anytime you think of a gift, give one of these tools of evangelization. Write us at the address on our screen or call us in the United States at 1-800-633-2484. We love you.